By five o'clock, Austerlitz was silent. Nine thousand Frenchmen were killed or wounded, along with sixteen thousand Russians and Austrians. The Tsar and his army retreated. But the Austrian Emperor himself, Francis I, came to sue for peace from the little Corsican artillery lieutenant who had made himself an emperor only one year before. A battle was fought today, Francis wrote his wife, which did not turn out very well. Napoleon wrote Josephine, I have defeated the Russian and Austrian army commanded by the two emperors. I am a little tired. I embrace you. Austerlitz had raised Napoleon's star to new heights. He had won his greatest victory, the victory of which he would always be the proudest. France rejoiced at the signing of the treaty between the two giant powers. Once again, peace in Europe seemed secure. In 1807, Napoleon's empire stretched from the Atlantic coast to the steppes of Russia, from the North Sea to the Mediterranean. He ruled over 70 million people, French, Italians, Dutch, Germans, Poles. There had been no greater empire since the days of Rome. Flushed with the pride of power, he dreamed of uniting all of Europe under French rule. The defeat of Russia and Prussia was so spectacular. Napoleon was stunned by the success. He never, he'd never visualized such success. And he began to think, my God, I can do anything. His rising star had reached its zenith. Yes, Mola. At that moment, he begins to believe that he is infallible. A superman. Someone protected by destiny. His famous star. He has complete power in Europe. And his pride is very great. Because this is a former little artillery lieutenant who has made it to the top. Ambition is never content, Napoleon once wrote, even on the summit of greatness. 38 years old, intoxicated with power, the ruler of almost all of Europe, he was bent on one more conquest. It was to be a fatal mistake.